Good morning, everybody, and uh, thank you for joining our webinar this morning, uh, hosted by Teal Technologies Canada. And our guest this morning is going to be Simon North. Uh, he's a partner manager with T3K uh, Forensics, uh, and we're going to be talking about uh, their core product. Um, core is a uh, screening uh, digital evidence screening uh, software, uh, which has got some really great capabilities. It's a bit of a game changer in the, uh, uh, in the area of ICE investigations, uh, those uh, investigating and uh, uh, categorizing uh, CSAM material. Um, the key takeaway uh, that I've had in looking at CORE and working with CORE is uh, how it can accelerate investigations uh, and get us to our end goal uh, very quickly. Um, and uh, with that said, uh, I think I'm not going to keep you here any longer. I'm going to turn you over to uh, Simon now. Super duper. Thanks a million, Frank. Um, so yeah, hi everyone. Um, I'm Simon. I'm uh, the partner, partner manager at E3K. Um, so my background is I'm from Ireland originally, if you can probably tell from the accent. Um, I started off uh, many, 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 many years ago in the video game industry, made my way um, to the trust and safety team at YouTube. And that was kind of how I ended up then at E3K because I found out about the, the work that they were doing um, in and around the whole area of yeah, safety tech, CSAM and um, those types of investigations. Um, so yeah, I ended up here in beautiful Vienna in Austria and I've been here for about two years now and loving it. Um, so a little bit then about T3K. We are a small, um, I guess you could still call us a startup, right? We're I think at the moment less than 20 people. Um, most of those are our, our um, machine learning AI developers. I'd say about yeah, 15 of those less than 20 people are developers. So very um, research and, and tech focused. Um, our origins were um, our, our first customer, let's say for our products was the German migration office. So so that was um, how we started. And from there, um, I think five, six, seven years ago, it's it's developed into this much broader um, range of, of use cases. And yeah, from that little little seed uh, core, uh, our content review engine has emerged. Um, and as Frank so graciously said, it, it is a bit of a, a game changer when it comes to digital investigations. Um, so yeah, today's topic is all about um, screening digital data at scale um, for illicit content. Um, so we'll get into that right now. If I can take control of this screen, there we go. So core, um, what exactly is core? Um, core is at its, uh, you know, center. It's, it's an image and video classifier API that screens media data. So that encompasses um, images, videos and um, images and videos embedded in documents, PDFs uh, and so on and so forth. Um, the idea behind Core, so Core, as I mentioned, is a pure API. It doesn't have a front end, a GUI, anything like that. It was developed um, to be integrated into other review platforms with a, a front end uh, and or a GUI. Um, so think along the lines of um, products like uh, Nuix Workstation, um, the 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 Xtero e-discovery tool, um, the um, Magnet Automate tool, um, even down to things like maybe Xways Forensics or, or Microsoft Power BI, any type of um, review platform that's used in digital forensics 
and e-discovery um or is is has been designed from from the ground up to be easily basically plugged in to those um platforms to to provide them with um media classification and analysis um so yeah it's, it's offered purely as an api solution and it's it's um it's easily uh, implementable as, as a REST or GRPC API. Um, and that was um, done very um, with intent fr from the beginning of the development of the engine. So basically how it works is the, the, the review tool will send um, the file paths to core. Um, core will open those up, have a look at what's inside and send any results back in the form of a JSON file um, back to their review platform. And then those results will be displayed um, as you are used to them in, in your platform, um, uh, albeit tagged with, you know, the detections and the custom metadata that that core um, tags onto those results um, as a result of, of the analysis. And yeah, it's it's again, it's the, the whole idea with this tool and, and why it is the way it is, is because it's um, been been designed to, to kind of seamlessly plug into whatever review platform that you're used to without having to, to remove you uh, uh, as investigators um, from the tools that you're used to, right? So that's, um, that's basically a, a quick overview of what core is at its core. <laughs> um, so this next slide, this may look a bit confusing at first, but this is kind of a snapshot of, of the technology that's that's in core and that T3K um, use, right? So the first row with pictures is the content that you know, the content that is known um, to you. The row underneath is the content you want to detect, right? And then underneath that is is the technology that's used um, for each of those categories, right? So starting over at, at the left, we have things like um, hash value comparison and photo DNA, which uh, I'm sure most of you know. You know, we T3K we did not develop those, um, but they're 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 industry standards and they're they're um excellent tools for what they are and, and and very useful um but where where we come in and and some of the tech that we have developed in-house is for example um you have i mean this 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 logo that we have here i believe is a is a um islamic state uh propaganda logo so with core you can upload that logo as a reference image into the system and um, use uh, the technology to to scan across all of your your media data uh, for that specific logo right same with um patterns uh you can see there on the next image uh, you know a, a distinctive wallpaper that you might be looking for in a csam investigation for example um as easy as uploading a reference image of that wallpaper or a carpet or for example um you know uh, maybe a child's face with a distinctive um freckle pattern um yeah it, and again it, it will search across your full data set no matter how large that might be um optical character recognition um we offered that at the moment for uh, Latin, Cyrillic and Arabic alphabets. Um, we have our age gender classifier. Um, things like face recognition. And then where it gets kind of interesting is, is you know, for, from our point of view anyway, and, and, and for, for hopefully for, for investigators and customers, is our um, object recognition. Um, these these object classifiers have been and there's a, we'll we'll go over them uh, I think in the next couple of slides uh, the, the 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 ones that we have or we've developed um, have been developed by us in house you know from from the ground up 
Um, our, our meta classifier technology is 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 a relatively new one. Um, basically, what that means is we've developed um, uh, an AI classifier that can be trained not by annotating tons of images, but by I'll use the example of CSAM again. If an, if we're working together with an authority, we can send them a script to basically encode those illicit indecent images into mathematical strings that represent the image and they cannot be turned back into the image. They get sent to us and we can use those represent mathematical representations of the image to then train our meta classifier. Um, and so that in itself is interesting, but what's also interesting is it, it means that if, for example, a specific use case needs a, a custom classifier for, for whatever uh, a reason, that can be trained um, using these encodings in, let's say, a week or so. Um, so it removes that um, kind of large amount of work that's usually involved in, in training classifiers. And again, something that's that's quite unique to core um, and to T3K uh, is the uh, idea of our natural language um, searching. Um, so this is split then into two types of things. We have an image to image similarity search where much like facial recognition or, or the, the pattern recognition or spark technology, um, you you give the system a, a reference image, and based on that image, it will find um, pictures of a, with a similar concept, right? So you see here, it's, it's it's a girl on a bike. It will find you children on bikes, right? Or you can go even further and say you can you know maybe put a, a you know a, an adult on a bike, and it will find you adults on bikes, right? And the same then with our with our text to image search. Um, you give the system in natural language English um, prompts uh, of, of the concepts of images that you want to find. Um, so for example, a man holding a baby, a man with curly hair holding a baby, um, children in a bedroom, um, Different types of drugs, um, people using drugs, and and the system will 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 um, understand those concepts and and give you back uh, relevant results if they're in the data set, of course. So that's to the um, technology that's within Core, um, and we'll move on to the next one. Some of the the use cases um, that Core can be used for, as I've mentioned, uh, CSA investigations. They're a particularly um, big focus for T3K at the moment. Um, we um, are, yeah, a, a lot of our efforts are are based around this just because um, it's it's such a massive topic and it, it really doesn't seem to be uh, slowing down. And um, I know that a lot of uh, law enforcement agencies, especially the, the cyber crime units are kind of overwhelmed with these cases, um, but we'll get onto that uh, a little bit later. Uh, things like terrorism, extremism, right wing, left wing extremism, um, Islamic extremism, um, organized crime, border control, which is, uh, as I mentioned, was kind of the the, the genesis of T3K um, back in the day. Um, human trafficking. Um, Identification of 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 maybe you know travelers, uh, people arriving to borders, and then you know more um, corporate use cases, financial crime, fraud, um, corruption, and e-discovery cases. Great. Um, a short look at how Core is integrated into the 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 platform. Um, that you might be using. Um, so basically, you have your unstructured data, and 
that um, goes into your, your your platform for for processing initial processing. Um, those file paths are then sent um, to core. Um, core opens them up, runs the classifiers across those uh, images. At the moment, um, it's in the works, but but not at the moment. It's not available at the moment that you can um, select uh, classifiers. Basically, core at the moment will run every classifier across the images and, and videos. Um, so you'll get all of the detections in, in, in the results of your workstation. Um, and then, yeah, so those detections then are, are, are thrown back to the, the workstation and um, you'll see them then in, in your front end that you're used to um, with those enrichments, um, the custom metadata, the, the objects that have been detected um, in those images and videos. And yeah, so then obviously as a result of that, that processing by core, then you can run the um, this natural language searching, the, the image to image and, and text to image searching across your data set at that point then. That makes sense to everyone. Um, oh yeah, just a quick note that um, the types of data that the that, that core can ingest. So it's things like, um, uh, I guess like raw, raw dumps of images, um, mobile device extractions, forensic images, your uh, uh, E01s and, and DD files. Um, document dumps, emails. Um, if it has media, core can ingest it essentially. And different types of um, uh, video files as well. The, the 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 main ones, for sure. Um, moving on then to to some of the classifier models that we have. Um, that support these use cases that I mentioned earlier. So we have yeah the the extremism classifier extremism slash terrorism classifier. Um, things like weapons and violence, um, military vehicles, the CSAM classifiers um, that when combined with our age and gender estimation as well uh, are, are extremely powerful. We have um, ALPR, uh, license plate recognition. We can search for any kind of um, IDs, passports, official documents, um, and then kind of more general things like maps, uh, screenshots of things, um, documents, uh, handwriting, receipts, invoices, um, we just got back from from a conference in Sydney, Australia, and and there was a lot of uh, corporate clients there, quite interested in in this um, handwriting detection, and using, for example, the the pattern recognition to identify um, letterheads um, in their, I guess, um, internal corruption investigations. Um, we can detect money. Um, the the broad spectrum of drugs and narcotics, not just the drugs themselves, but but the concept around narcotics, so people using drugs, um, different plants, um, drug paraphernalia, scales, syringes, things like that, and facial recognition. Um, good. So then, when it comes to the the topic of of CSAM, um, this again is, is I would say, one of our um, specializations for sure. So the way it works is we, we um, use a combination, right, of, of our object classifiers um, and our, as I mentioned before, this, this, this meta classifier technology um, where we have these, these abstracted mathematical strings of images, um, so we combine these two things where it's detecting, you know, things like genitals. Is there nudity? Is there underwear? Is there a face close-up? And 
um, the the classifier that's been trained on abstracted uh, uh, CSAM. Um, so so we don't actually receive any any um, illegal material to train this. It's all abstracted in, into numbers. Um, so those two things together um, create a, an extremely powerful and, and precise classifier. Um, the kind of the 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 origins of of this classifier, this meta classifier, um, it came about because there was a, a competition in, in Germany from the state attorney's office in Cologne. The the um, they have a, a, a cybercrime agency there, and they needed a um, AI solution to close um these what they call digital naivety cases right so it's these um self-produced um indecent images that that kids send around and and distribute um so that that this technology um was developed in, in conjunction with them um and they recently included a round of testing on real world cases in Germany and they reported back with um, between 90 to 94% true positive and 3 to 4% false positives um, in those investigations. So so I think it's um, those types of numbers are, are uh, unheard of in the market at, at the moment. Um, and the good thing about this, this technology is that it can be, you know, as we work with more and more agencies, um, this technology can be continuously retrained and made only stronger. Um, for example, we recently acquired our first uh, customer in Canada, in, in Alberta. There's an ICE investigator up there and um, he has very graciously agreed to um, engage in, in the training of this uh, uh, classifier, um, sending us over these, these um, encodings. Um, and I think it's 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 this idea of of you know using this script we have to 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 send us over just mathematical um, abstracted strings of of numerical data is quite attractive to to a lot of people because obviously no illegal material is being shared, and it means that at the end of the day the product that they're getting is going to be even better. So it's it's um it's kind of a, a win win. Um, for our customers. Um, so I'll move on. Yes, yeah, so this is just a bit kind of a, a representation of um, the, the, the hit rates of our technology in comparison to Microsoft's photo DNA and the even more traditional um, hashing technology. Um, I guess on this as well, you know, if as an investigator you're using the likes of um, photo DNA and, and hashing, um, essentially what you're doing is searching for and detecting known CSAM, okay, your CSAM that has ended up in, um, you know, the likes of a Project Vic database. Um, and those those technologies are available within core and it's 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 vital that they're there. However, what can be missed is um, self produced or or modified what we call first generation CSAM, right? Stuff that isn't in those databases. So with T3K and our CSAM classifier, you can um, essentially find that material that the uh, photo DNA and and hashing would miss because it doesn't know about it, right? It's 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 blind to this new material because it doesn't have a reference for it. Um, so I think that's really um, what has uh, won over. Um, for example, our, our our dear friend now in in Alberta, uh, there in Canada, I think this has um, kind of blown his mind a little bit that he's finding so much stuff. Um, using our technology. So then kind of this this next section is just um, 
a little insight into what the results that core sends back um, to to whatever front end you're using might look like. Um, what you're looking at here is um, Newix workstation. So at the moment, um, I guess the, our our integration into Newix workstation is is um, the most tangible, right? It's it's the furthest along. We're also in um, discussions with the likes of um, Magnet, a Canadian company, I believe, to to potentially um, integrate into their products. Um, who else is interested? Uh, the likes of Xtero want want to um, have us in there. So, but but just to give you a, an idea of what that might look like, um, we we have some screenshots from Newix here. Um, so basically, yeah, you can see it. It, it groups um, after the the processing has been done. Um, it will group everything together for you based on the the classifiers. Like I said, at the moment you can't you know turn on and off um, the classifiers. It just runs them all. Uh, across the, the data. So all of the, the yeah, screenshots, maps, ID cards, um, extremism, all of the ones that we talked about are, are run at once. Of course it is in the works to be able to do that and um, to turn them on and off, but that's um, that's for a future release. Um, so yeah, uh, we have here some, uh, an idea of what ID card detection might look like. Um, License plates. Um, so we've trained the license plate detection to work on um, any license plate from any country because it's such a vast uh, uh, variance in what those look like. But even between, you know, European and Canadian, North American license plates, um, they can look vastly different sometimes. But um, we've trained the the model with with that in mind um, for that variance. Um, facial recognition. Um, again, it's it's really is it really is as simple as uploading a um, a reference image of of the person, the face you want to find into the system, um, and it it will find that even you can see there in in the 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 picture of the ID card. You know, it's it's at an angle. There's a shadow. Um, and it's 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 picking up on that face. Even with that slight variance, um, if the image is a bit grainy, like the one there of of, of Osama bin Laden. The, uh, the classifier doesn't mind that too much. Um, and a question sometimes that we get is or maybe a, a concern of some people that certainly I've heard. About using this type of technology is is the the traceability of these results right but but with core um this full traceability back you know right back to where the file was found on the device or or in the folder um and even you know if if the metadata contains it we have um exif data the the make and model of the camera that was used for for the image um date and time of of the taking or modification of, of that image. So it's fully, fully traceable, um, which definitely helps in, in, in an investigation. Um, extremism content. So this is looking for things like um, people in masks, um, people in ski masks, um, IS flags, um, guns, um, Arab or Islamic uh, 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 propaganda material, but also um, we've included in there um, right wing groups, left wing extremism groups. Um, so yeah, the the kind of the broad spectrum of extremism. Uh, military equipment, tanks, guns, uh, military uniforms. Um, helmets um war scenarios this has all been um included in the the military classifier um 
the topic of, of violence and weapons. Um, quite a broad topic. Um, so initially we, we only had a weapons classifier. But in the past, I'd say six months, we've we've included uh, the topic of, of violence in there as well. Um, so that includes not only you know knives, guns, and and other weapons, but but the concept of violence. So it's things like um, scenes of riots, um, people fighting, um, injured people, people with blood on 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 their bodies. Um, you know, crowds of people with flares, things like that. So it's a much broader um, and more powerful classifier now, certainly than it was um, as just a weapons classifier. And and speaking of weapons, it's 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 not only you know weapons, but you can see there um, in the, the the second row, um, second picture into the uh, to the right, um, a gun broken into its constituent parts. Right, so we've even gone as far as as training this classifier to pick up on um, the constituent parts of weapons of guns. Right, so it's not a, just a, not just a whole a whole gun, but but the parts of it. Um, as I mentioned, this this kind of the the, the again broad, uh, wide topic of of drugs and narcotics. Um, again, kind of uh, simultaneously to our um, weapons and violence classifier, we 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 reworked um, our narcotics classifier to include not only you know the typical depictions of of drugs as you know a bag of of marijuana or some pills, but to make it um, much. Uh, uh, more useful in its application. So, so things like, um, yeah, the drug plants, excluding house plants. So the likes of, of ferns or, or you know, leafy green house plants, um, powders, excluding things like uh, pictures of 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 sand, of of snow, of um, flour in in somebody's kitchen, which I think is is a um, common problem in in some of the other. Uh, classifiers out there is that you're kind of um, especially with these topics like CSAM and, and, and drugs you're kind of um, overwhelmed with with tons and tons of false positives right which kind of just end up wasting your time but we have um, designed these classifiers with those false positives in mind and and basically trained it in such a way that um, only the relevant items will appear. Of course, it's not perfect. There will of course be, like I said, even with our, our reworked and, and very powerful CSAM classifier, you're still getting a FP rate of about three to four percent. But that's much lower than than certainly um, anything that's out there at the moment. Um, so yeah, uh, house plants, um, blister packs of pills, um, collections of of um, drug packaging, uh, the the boxes, um, people selling drugs, people injecting drugs. Um, as I mentioned, the paraphernalia that might be found uh, around drugs. Um, yeah, so again, quite quite. Uh, um, Quite powerful. Um, our document and money and uh, receipt classifier picks up on obviously different types of money, um, paper money, whatever the currency might be, um, different types of, of documents, statements, invoices. Um, you can see there in the last picture as well, uh, uh, receipts. Um, even if it's not a single, you know, focused picture of a receipt, if it's jumbled in with other documents, um, you can see there that it's it's still um, popping up in, in the results. Um, a quick note then on our um, pattern recognition technology. 
um, pattern and logo, should I say. Um, the idea with this is that you upload a basically a, a reference image, a 2D image of the logo as a JPEG. You upload that into the, the system. Um, and then basically these pictures here are a representation of the, the kind of the magic that's going on behind the scenes. Um, it, it identifies key points in those reference images and matches it um, to your data, be it uh, an image or, or a video, um, especially so for, yeah, searching for things like specific, uh, uh, maybe gang tattoos, gang symbols, um, money, um, works of art, um, any anything really that you can think of. I mean, if, if you know in a CSAM inve investigation that a, a child wears a specific brand of clothing, um, you can um, search for that, essentially. And last but not least, um, our uh, uh, natural language text to image and image to image searching. Um, this is just a, a a representation of of what that might look like in your tool, right? So it's essentially it's a search engine for your data, right? So you can get as as creative or as focused as you want with your with your searches. It's a keyword search essentially. Um, and you can basically search in, I wouldn't even say seconds, milliseconds across um, millions of, of media data. Um, and those results will be thrown back to you um, immediately because um, how it works is that these images have been um, again encoded um, so the system is not, you know, searching across the images themselves, but encodings of those images, which completely speeds up the process and um, is makes it near instantaneous. And yeah, uh, for our um, image to image searching, again, similar concept. Upload a, a reference image, and you'll get a, a, a basically a um, similarity uh, a result. Of the concept of the image that you've uploaded into the system. Um, so basically, to, to sum up, um, what T3K offer is what we believe is, and truly, we believe this. It's it's the simply best in class classification out there, right? Be it for CSAM, be it for our narcotics violence. Mm, detection of logos, um, the ability to um, train custom classifiers, you know, in a matter of days, and the easy integration of this technology into your platform without having to remove you from your uh, uh, ecosystem that you know and like. Um, so that's it. That's kind of um, a, a brief snapshot of, of what core can do um hopefully there was something of interest in there for you um and i'd like to thank you for your attention hopefully it wasn't too boring and um if there are any questions i'm happy to answer them thanks a lot hi simon uh we did uh, hey, hey. have a couple uh, questions come up um, right. So one of the, the questions that came up was uh, whether there are any limitations to who can license it. Uh, so are we talking limitations to law enforcement, government, military, uh, private sector? Um, no, uh, no. So so with Core, as opposed to our other product, Leap, which is our law enforcement analytics program that we or platform that we only sell to law enforcement, um, Core is is available to to um, everyone. Basically, um, whether it's uh, law enforcement, government, or, or private sector. Mm -hmm. All right, thanks. Mm -hmm. so that, that's one of the questions. We had another uh, mm -hmm. question about uh, integration with uh, MSAB. Uh, so uh, uh, basically, XRY uh, 
in their examine uh, uh, platform. Yep. Again, so so I actually forgot to mention MSAB. They're also one of the companies that were in kind of um, early to mid stage discussions with about an integration um, into there. However, um, that's not to say that you know if if there's a need in the here and now for core to be integrated, um, it it can be done if if there's a technical team in the in the organization or if they have an integration partner that does these types of things um core can be integrated before you know we talk about maybe a, an oem integration um between t3k and and the likes of msab or or, or magnet or or others so it's it's doable um even before the like the, the official integration happens mm -hmm. okay thank you very much mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. We uh, one of the other questions that's come up is uh, in time in terms of processing time. Uh, so uh, what might we be looking at processing time uh, before we can actually start looking at getting results? It depends is my answer. <laughs> um, I mean, um, our CEO Felix and our um, IT guy uh, went a couple of weeks ago to um, our data center where they had access to, you know, the, the, the best of the best graphics cards and, and CPUs. And if I'm not mistaken, they analyzed um, over a thousand hours of video and um, a couple of million images in, I think it was three seconds, right? So if if that's the level of, of technology that's available, then that's doable. However, if we're talking, you know, a, a, a standard setup, and in fact, why don't I use this opportunity to um, show people what the uh, kind of minimum requirements for core are. It's, it's a lot less than you might think. Um, so it's it's a it's a you know commercial or not commercial but like a, a consumer grade uh, uh, GPU right an RTX um, a, a decent CPU a bit of RAM not as much as you might think and Ubuntu um, so I mean if we're talking a couple of gigabytes of of data. Um, much less than an hour of, of processing with that type of setup, right? Like this is the minimum requirements. OK, so so yeah, less less than an hour for processing, you know, four, five, six gigs of, of, of data. Mm -hmm. Thanks. For and that. then, you know, if, if, if obviously as, as, a, as, a, as a result of if you have better uh, 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 more robust equipment, that time is only going to reduce greatly. Mm -hmm. Fantastic. <clears throat> um, we were uh, one of the things you and I discussed early, uh, early on before we got going mm -hmm. was uh, the uh, the idea of uh, uh, of testing the product, of uh, doing some uh, trial. Um, sure. Now, obviously, it's, it could be different for. Uh, different clients uh, maybe you can yep. walk us through just a, a brief overview of how that would, would look like sure so basically um if anyone is interested in in having a look at core um you can basically either get in touch with with uh, uh frank or directly with us at t3k um and we'll kind of you know go through your use case a little bit see where you're coming from um and then if if there's a, a match there we'll we'll um send you over uh maybe you know usually we'll give people a month right to try out a, a trial uh we send you over the the api itself the documentation um if you want to um you know dig around have a look um see what's going on i would say that um 
if you know getting core into a product requires a bit of uh, technical expertise um so for example I, I i wouldn't know even know where to begin how to, how to integrate it into a um a review platform but if you have people in your organization who can do that um and we've had this trials with with other uh, organizations it's you know uh, maybe two days work to get it up and running in in a um in a review platform um in a kind of a you know basic enough way but where you'll see the the detections um so that's generally how we do it or again if you have an integration partner for your organization that can um do those types of things um by all means um we're, we're more than happy to provide them also with with the api we also had a guy very recently who um you know we said this to him that it's you know it's just an api there's no front end and he went and built his own again it was very rudimentary but it was his own um kind of web front end that he he used to to visualize the results um that core was giving back so that's also an option if you if you're that way inclined um and and technical enough um but sending over the api as a trial um for you to do whatever you want with it is absolutely no um problem it's it's as simple as get in touch uh we'll have a quick chat um we'll send you over um a license key and away you go Thank you very much. Now you mentioned the keyword license key. Yes. Uh, so uh, are we looking at, uh, uh, you know, site licenses? Are we looking at individual licenses per user uh, or is there a different? Uh, no, so, so with, the core, it, with core, it's, it's a site license, right? Um, just because of the nature of the product. Um, um, it's, a, it's, yeah, it's, a, it's a per site license. Again, this is differing to our other product leap which we um, mainly license um, by user, but, but core, yeah, there's no per user model for core. It's an all in. Mm -hmm. All right, perfect. Thank you very mm -hmm. much, Simon. Mm -hmm. And I don't see, I'm just taking a quick look. I don't see a, any further questions. Uh, I've got one from Jeffrey Bell that I'll send to you off uh, uh, offline. Uh, sure. No um, problem. No problem. And without uh, that, I'd like to uh, thank you for taking the time to uh, walk everybody through uh, CORE and no uh, remind them that we're going to have a couple more uh, webinars coming up uh, looking at uh, some of the other offerings from uh, T3K. So uh, please, Absolutely. Uh, please keep yourselves posted. Uh, we should have the next one coming up uh, in a few weeks. Absolutely. And on that note, thank you very much for everybody. I'm going to end the uh, presentation and the reminder that uh, you can look at uh, Teal Tech's uh, YouTube channel uh, to get a recorded uh, version of this presentation. Thank you Super very much. Duper. Thanks Bye. a lot, everyone. Bye.